Welcome again to Educator.com. Thank you so much for being prepared and getting stuff written because now comes the grueling task of proofreading and editing. So let's review the halves of the brain. We all remember what the right brain does, right? Well, it comes up with a lot of ideas. It is extremely creative and it'll give lots of emotion. What does the left brain do? Well, it edits, organizes, and polishes. Bet you can guess which part of the brain we're going to be working with today. We are going to be editing. So we're using 100% left brain. This is the opposite of those journal entries you did at the beginning. Now we just got to make sure that our ideas are already on paper and all the left brain is going to do is kind of arrange them, polish them, shape them, make them look better because you want your reader to like your paper as much as you do. So the process of editing kind of goes into what I feel are three basic steps. First off, you got to do the most basic, which is proofreading. And then you have to edit for style. That's a little bit harder, a little bit more abstract. And after you edit for style, you might want to go back and proofread again, but it's usually just once. And finally, the third step is actually very, very important because writing is a collective thing, is audience input. And I'll tell you a story about audience input later to kind of help you understand how important it is. So one basic rule though, before you go to steps one or two, finish writing your paper, turn off your laptop, go to sleep. Wait 24 hours between drafting and proofreading. You'll catch things faster that way. I'm not sure why, but that's just kind of how it works. Now, when I proofread, I like to use my black pen and we're going to see kind of how this works. I have a very poorly written paragraph here that I, we're going to proofread for mostly grammar, but also for style. Cicero was the very greatest Roman speaker and thinker. I'm underlining my problems right now. I'm using my left brain to find all the problems. He was never afraid to speak up a lot and for justice, morality of the Republic. Okay, there's another problem. I think those are too many words. I don't like that. However, after a while, he, he been, wait, he been? Is that correct? Am I missing something there? So popular that he made a few enemies. Some of his enemies came to him and said, you're dead. Wait, you're dead? You are dead? Am I using the right your? Is it your as in possessive or your as in you are? You're dead if you don't stop speaking. He didn't shut up. No, 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 no. This is an academic paper. I'm not going to use the words shut up. I'm going to find something more appropriate. They killed him. Cicero is not speaking for Rome no more. Can you catch the errors there? Can you see how bad that sounds and how just a little bit of editing is going to make that sound a lot better? This is not the grammar course. I'm not going to go over grammar in detail, but what I am going to go over is some of the most common errors, including what I call the grammar cardinal sins, to help you make sure you don't make them.